bruh. It's early. And, um, we're on a little adventure. We're going to pick up Drew. We're already running late, as per usual, you know. Wouldn't be a day with me if we weren't 10 or 15 minutes late. So, um, we're going to see about a thing that could be good, could be bad. We just got to find out. Let's get it. Stay in the right two lanes. Got it. You did stay in the right two lanes. But anyway, guys, welcome back. We uh, went and took a look at uh, a potential bad decision, and I think we made a good decision and didn't purchase the truck. So I'm going to throw up some uh, images of the ad of the truck and kind of what it was. It was a 06 F250, no, F350 dually. Um, 118,000 miles, so really low mileage for the year. Uh, I mean, the truck, on the outside, it's your normal dings and dents and stuff like that from somebody using it as a truck, but nothing major. The bed was like whatever, like rhino liner or whatever they put in there was like literally fading away into nothing. It didn't have an original tailgate, which is kind of a meh. Uh, but all in all, it had some cosmetic stuff, it wasn't too bad. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys like actually you know want to know or care to know but there's a lot of stuff you need to look for when you're looking at these six liter diesels um the main thing that kills them is the head gasket failures right everybody kind of knows that well what happens the reason that the head gaskets fail typically uh is because the oil cooler clogs up and then it overheats the uh, EGR cooler which pressurizes that system it'll blow out that system and then you get excess head pressure and it's just like a kind of a domino a chain reaction effect um, and that's what this truck had going on it wasn't completely failed yet but it was it was getting there so basically you want the delta between your engine cooling temp and your engine oil temp to be no more than uh, 15 degrees uh, at highway speeds you know 65 70 miles an hour and really it, you shouldn't ever see high temps just kind of putting around town they should always be pretty close within five or six degrees um, so we brought a little kind of makeshift scan gauge you got like a torque the torque pro app um, on this little Samsung oh uh, shit. yeah I was gonna say I got footage of it like uh... yeah we'll can throw it up there we'll show you yeah. what it kind of looks like but it, it's basically it? just just your basic like scanner yeah, but now it's uh, 199, 4, 216, 5. So. This was 17 degrees over. Yeah, roughly. And we're just cruising at 65. Yep, pretty much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. So shaky. Oh. Yeah. It needs tires. Yeah, it needs tires, suspension work. It needs an oil cooler soon. Yeah. And I'll have to pass on it. Somebody will buy it, but it won't be me. Yeah. But, you know, was it worth coming to look at? Because it's clean, it's low mileage, but... Um, you download the Ford PIDs and blah, blah, blah. There's plenty of videos on it if you want to go take a look. But, it, uh... Anyway, this truck, we hit what? Like two... It was what? Hold on, let me pull up the picture. It's 188 Sorry. coolant, and I think like 208 or 209 or something like that. Uh, oil temp. 206... 0.3 oil temp, 188.6 coolant temp. But that had come down some on the oil temp side. Uh, it was like 208 at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was on it. That, that was on its way down. Right. We had been like we got off the interstate, started putting around, and where it shouldn't be going up, it should just kind of like level itself out. It just ramped up like really quick, and that that's not good. Yeah, so basically what's what's going on with that particular truck is that the oil cooler is starting to clog up and you're getting these really spikes in oil temp 
over what the coolant temp is. So uh, eventually it's gonna have problems. And it's just kind of the nature of the beast. You could fix it by putting on like a bulletproof diesel um, air to oil cooler, like you know the front mounts that like you would see in a race car. That's the real way to fix them. Um, you can put a factory room back on, but you'll be in the same boat, you know, now it may take a couple of years, but it's gonna fail again. If you plan on keeping the truck for any length of time, you put the bulletproof diesel one on and you're done. But that's 2000 bucks just for the cooler. That's not counting like if you had to have a shop do it or anything like that. So, I mean, granted, Drew and I could take care of it. We could do it, but it's just one of those things. It's two grand right off top. That's not counting. I wanted to get a new tailgate because I didn't like the, having no tailgate on it. Um, you know, and all the little cosmetic stuff that I'm just kind of, that's me. Like, I, it's just, I have to have it looking good. Yeah. So, needed um, bushings. It needed all the body bushings needed to be replaced. Yeah. Um, it needed ball joints, which the guy had the ball joints to replace it. Um, and then, so we looked underneath there to kind of look at the ball joints and see like, well, if they need to be replaced, like, can I drive it home? Can I drive it three hours back home? Are they that bad yet? Uh, so he said it had fairly new tires on it, which it didn't. They were had decent tread, but the truck's been sitting for a year. So the tires are shot, they're dry rotted. Like they probably would have made it back, but then the inner two tires were completely shot, like bald. So you need at least, and then the outside outers were older than the fronts. So like it needs six tires. So six tires, ball joints, and then the worst of it, besides the old cooler, is it's full of rust. Now, I did a Carfax on it before we drove all the way out here to make sure it hadn't gone from the north to the south. The truck said it was basically, original owner bought it in Tennessee. The second owner bought it in Tennessee. It had never been registered anywhere other than Tennessee. And then- In one mile, turn left onto State Highway 62. Now that we've been rudely interrupted. Uh, Tennessee, and then it was registered briefly in Mississippi by the, this owner. Um, so it had been a southern truck all its life. But it had a lot of rust on the suspension, like especially the steering components. The frame wasn't too bad, but there were spots where you could tell somebody had kind of painted it a little bit. Like it was cleaner in the front of the truck than in the middle of the, the truck. So it's kind of sketchy. Uh, the suspension components are like the idler arm, pitman arm, all the tie rods. They were Oil like, pan. yeah, they were just chock full of rust. So it had been up north at some point in its life. Maybe it was never registered there. Maybe somebody used it to tow an RV and spent some time up there when it was snowy and salty because it definitely had seen some northern conditions. So, I mean, all in all, he was asking 11 for it. I probably, probably would have bought it had it had. At the, the light, turn problem. left onto Bruh. State Highway 62. Bruh. It's going gonna, it's gonna to tell you to take a left. Take, <laughs> take, take, take a left. <laughs> it's about to interrupt you again. But, take a left now. Right, like, hurry up, now. Um, let's see if it talks when we pull up here, because you know how it likes to do that. Like, take a left. It's like, I can't. Uh, the light's red. Uh. Um, doesn't seem like it. Anyway. Had it had maybe just the suspension components been bad and just worn out and needed to be changed, I probably would have bought it. Um, but being that they were rusty and worn out, and it's just like ah, fighting rust. Like I've done mechanic work before, and you know, fighting rust, like working on those big trucks is already hard enough, and then having to fight rust on top of that, like no way. Like it's just like if you know anything about the six liter diesels. You know that there if we got this problem everybody knows about the problem and nobody wants to mess with them um, even though they're not really that bad you just got to know what to look for uh, i'm rambling on but anyway this wasn't a good deal and so that's why i brought drew because he's my voice of reason because i would have been out here like man i drove all this way you know i can know i can fix it and i end up buying a truck and then two and a half hours on the way home i'd be pissed yeah it's just better to walk away from it even though right. like the truck was clean it had everything i wanted like i had the heated seats it had the Lariat package, like it had the trailer brakes, it had the auxiliary switches, like everything that I want in that truck, it had. But you know, it just wasn't worth the trade-off. wasn't 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 worth it. Yeah, and you have to be willing to make just like make that decision. And, you Walk know, away. drive four hours or a total of eight hours for there and back, and be able to just say no and walk away because at the end of the day, 
if it's not a good deal for you, that's the key. It has to be a good deal for you, not for the other person, for you. So, I mean, that's the gist of it. That's kind yeah. of what happened. I mean, this is what it is. Some either you win, some you lose, some. I think we won here. It yeah. It feel like a loss, but I don't think it was. Yeah. Well, uh, it's not a loss to save eleven thousand dollars. <laughs> nope. So. That thing looks like a true loss, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! That thing's clapped out. for this video um ironically wearing the same shirt definitely a couple days later um anyway if you got some kind of value out of the video throw me a thumbs up uh, if you have a question about six liter trucks or you know just you know searching for them in general you know what to look for uh you know leave your question below if you got any kind of comments hated the video whatever leave it in the comment section below um if you want to see more videos please consider subscribing but that's all we have time for today, guys. As always, I appreciate you coming out and watching the videos. Peace.